On the evening of September 28, 2023, all trading of Evergrande shares on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange was temporarily suspended. Evergrande announced that the company has been notified by the relevant departments that Xu Jiayin, executive director and chairman of the board of directors of the company, is suspected of committing a criminal offense and has been subjected to compulsory measures in accordance with the law. Several media outlets confirmed that the incident took place a few days before September 28th when Xu's second son, Peter Xu, was taken away by police along with his father. Eyewitnesses said there was quite a commotion at the scene, and Chu was even handcuffed and shackled. He is now living under surveillance at a designated location. An official Weibo account in mainland China reported that Xu Jiayin had been placed under surveillance at a residence in Beijing. In China, designated residential surveillance is the equivalent of a private prison of the CCP. As previously reported, a number of Evergrande's core executives, Xu's inner circle of associates, have been arrested one after another. These include Evergrande's former chief executive officer, who used to be Evergrande's number two person, Evergrande Life's former chairman, Evergrande Wealth's executive director, who was regarded as Xu Jiayin's cash bag, Evergrande's former chief financial officer, two of Evergrande Properties' former chairman, and so on. The successive cases of Mr. Xu's subordinates are a sign that Beijing authorities are about to tighten their grip. Evergrande is on the verge of collapse after China's economic downturn and banks' tightening of credit. Its financial report in July 2023 showed that by the end of 2022, it had total debt of about $338.7 billion, making it the world's most indebted real estate developer. Based on China's population of 1.4 billion, this is equivalent to owing every Chinese person $250. According to a September 27th report by a WeChat public account, Torch Partners Plus, Evergrande filed for bankruptcy protection on August 18th, 2023 in the U.S., raising alarms in the Chinese government. In September, the authorities began to investigate Evergrande's property and arrest people to prevent Evergrande's capital from continuing to flow out. How Xu Jiayin transferred his property is a topic we will introduce in the second half of the episode. Now let's take a look at some of Evergrande's backstory that has been unearthed by the Chinese media. In 2010, Xu Jiayin, who was in the spotlight, splashed out money, bought out the Guangzhou Football Club, and at the same time spent a huge amount of money on a well-known cultural troupe to poach a group of high-quality performers and set up the Evergrande ethnic singing and dancing troupe. All of them were beautiful young girls, receiving a high salary every day. A Chinese netizen disclosed that the reception at Evergrande's headquarters was often attended by national bands and hundreds of beautiful women. Who were the guests? Specialized planes traveled from China to Europe, transporting the red descendants of the CCP high-ranking officials from all over the world and their relatives. The special flights were filled with top-notch champagne and pretty girls. Other netizens also revealed Xu's extravagant lifestyle. He had 12 rules for the hotels where he stayed, which were all very demanding. It ranged from the specifications of the rooms to the drinking water, all of which had to be arranged by the staff beforehand. Previously, an Evergrande executive in charge of the hotel business had as many as 14 rules for his hotel stay, including the brand of razor, skincare products, and his favorite room number. Here, a well-known Chinese scholar recalled his encounter with Ba Xu Jiayin. Oh. Mr. Xu invited me to meet. I waited for him in the lobby of the hotel, which was his hotel lobby. But he went to the gym and texted me. I'm at the gym, I'll be right back. Wait for me in the lobby for a bit. I waited in the lobby for five minutes. He came in wearing a tracksuit and an overcoat. He saw I was there. He shook his shoulders, his overcoat slipped off and someone caught it. <laughs> It reminds me of a Stephen Chow movie. Uh. 
It's definitely better than the movie. When he shakes his shoulders, his coat goes slipping off and someone catches it. He doesn't even look back. If I were to do that, I would have to check if the guy would catch my coat. What if it fell to the floor? Then Pop, when he was talking to me, he popped his hand this way, and someone behind him immediately put a big cigar into his hand. He took two puffs before talking to me. It was like a movie scene. Did he rehearse? Yes, he said, for bodybuilding, Chinese people don't know how to do it properly. They train blindly. I hired an American trainer. He took a puff, pop, a sound. His assistant at the back took over the cigar, knocking off the ashes and handed it back to him. His hand kept making this motion and his assistant kept knocking off the ashes and handing it back to him. That day, I felt embarrassed. I almost laughed out loud. You don't know what I laughed at? It's that all of his behavior and mannerism felt rehearsed. His assistants had to pay full attention, otherwise when he raised his hand they might miss it. His assistants knew what their boss meant. They all knew it. Also, an elevator was reserved for his exclusive use. It was an empty elevator in the lobby. Ba Xu's men were waiting there. They went in, went up, drank tea, did whatever, and all the actions were perfectly synchronized and measured. I was shocked by the whole process. I went back to try to shake off the overcoat and it wasn't as easy as it appeared. To shake off the overcoat, you have to use the shoulder. If you don't do it in a certain way, you can't shake it off. On top of Xu's bossy personal style, Evergrande's scamming tactics have also been exposed. I have a lot of friends who have been cheated by Evergrande. 4 billion RMB or 560 million USD have been cheated by Evergrande. Xu Jiayin told my friend that Evergrande is the king of real estate and the land is worth a lot of money. So if you deposit your money here, you can get a 15% return every year. My friend saw a 15% return, which was really good. And with the guarantee from Xu Jiayin, he lent the money to him. As a result, not only did he not get a cent of interest, but also the principal disappeared and was lost. Later, my friend didn't eat or sleep for 10 straight days in his office. He almost jumped off the building. I ran into him a few days ago and he just got out of the mess. Too many people have been cheated. I have another good friend, the founder of a corporation, a righteous man. When Xu Jiayin was in trouble, he invested 2.8 billion US dollars. As a result, his corporation was dragged into bankruptcy by Evergrande. There are many, many such cases. In 2021, when Evergrande was in trouble and his debts went through the roof, all the legal proceedings nationwide had to go to the High Court of Guangdong Province. It means that all lawsuits against Evergrande have to be filed with the High Court of Guangdong Province. In other words, all lawsuits, disputes over real estate projects in different places and payments to various parties have to be filed with the High Court of Guangdong Province, not anywhere else in the country. What does it mean? The state is protecting him by giving him time to solve these problems. He can have time and space to address a variety of disputes, such as the delivery problem, the supplier payment problem, and so on and so forth. Government protection is obvious. Why has the Chinese government recently taken action? Why is criminal detention being used? It's because of a taboo. Guess what the taboo is? Xu Jiayin used US law for bankruptcy protection because his wife and sons immigrated to North America. They borrowed money through the so-called bond issuance and turned China's national assets into personal assets in the US. He wanted to protect his American assets. In other words, the debt is left to China and all the assets are under his name in the US. He then used the confrontation between the US and China and the American regime and the politics to unravel the situation. This is a blatant enemy of the Chinese people, an enemy of the country. Now let's look at the path of how Xu Jiayin transferred his huge wealth. According to the WeChat public account Torch Partner Plus on September 27, 2023 through the agreement control or specifically variable interest entity VIE structure, Xu Jiayin entrusted the shareholding to a Cayman's offshore company. The company was registered in the Cayman Islands and then through the fiduciary duty indirectly held Evergrande's control. But he doesn't have the actual legal liability. That is, if Evergrande defaults in China, Xu Jiayin can't be held responsible technically.
In the past few years, Evergrande has issued a large number of overseas high-interest corporate bonds. They were only available for purchase by Xu Jiayin's family and relatives. In this way, a large amount of capital was converted into foreign exchange for interest payments, thus evading China's capital controls. In 2018, Xu Jiayin spent his private money to purchase U.S. dollar bonds issued overseas by Evergrande, with a coupon rate of 13.75%. In other words, Xu Jiayin turned from the original controlling shareholder into a creditor of Evergrande with the help of the VIE structure. It became a channel to move money from China to overseas, a process of hollowing out Evergrande. Evergrande's money was moved overseas by Xu Jiayin and his close associates, leaving the country full of debts. Three years after its debt crisis broke out, Evergrande hasn't prioritized the delivery of properties, but to ensure the payment of interest on overseas U.S. dollar debt. Evergrande's domestic debt in China accounts for nearly 80%, and its overseas debt accounts for less than 20%. But Evergrande only pays U.S. dollar debt, not domestic debt. If Xu Jiayin wants to avoid domestic debt recourse, he has to seek the protection of the U.S. bankruptcy code. But the precondition is the debt restructuring plan with creditor vote must first be passed. Now the creditors are all members of Xu Jiayin's family. As long as they pass the restructuring plan, Xu Jiayin and his family can receive protection from the U.S. On August 18, 2023, Evergrande filed for bankruptcy protection in the U.S. In September, Ba Xu and related family members were arrested. Then, we saw the news that Evergrande's debt restructuring meeting was put on hold on September 22nd. On September 24th, Evergrande issued an announcement stating that it could not meet the qualifications for the issuance of new notes. These pieces of news indicate that Xi Jinping's government has taken urgent action to abort Evergrande's debt restructuring meeting. Xu Jiayin started multiple actions two years ago. Between 2022 and June 2023, he divorced his wife, a tactic called a technical divorce by the Chinese people. Of the approximately US$13.42 billion in dividends accumulated by Evergrande Group, Xu and his wife obtained most of the dividends through the offshore companies in the British Virgin Islands and Cayman Islands, which are 100% controlled by the two respectively. The money was transferred overseas and eventually fell into the pockets of Xu's ex-wife, who currently resides in Canada. Such high dividends were obtained through accounting fraud. In addition, before Xu Jiayin declared Evergrande's property bankrupt, his son received a single-family trust fund worth up to US$330 million. Behind the successive crashes of China's major real estate companies are the flaws in China's financial system uncontrolled borrowing, expansion, and corruption, long fueled by a large group of powerful Communist Party families. Here, we have the world's number one auto glass maker in China and the world's number two auto glass maker in 2021 talking about the inner workings of Xu Jiayin's capital expansion. <laughs> Commercial banks in China can lend money to real estate, such as registering a company, getting a piece of land, and mortgaging it back and forth. With a total of RMB 3.9 billion of his own capital, Xu Jiayin borrowed up to 2 trillion RMB. 2 trillion is equivalent to 2% of China's GDP in 2020. This is only Xu's family. There's the Zhang family, Li family, Wang family, and Liu family, and the Bastards family. It's a mess. It's the Chinese style of finance. When we learn from the U.S., we might have missed some of the punctuation marks. It has led to us not being able to express things clearly and resulted in what happened. But I told my fellow brothers that all the officials only did the bureaucratic talking. I will tell you the truth. The most successful approach should be to adhere to the ancestral teachings of respecting heaven and loving people, which was preached by Mr. Wang Yang Ming of the Ming Dynasty. That's the principle that must be adhered to. Take one step at a time and be grounded. If you want to pluck someone's heart, you should worry about whether your own heart will be plucked out. When Xu Jiayin talked about the early development of Evergrande, he also talked about how he got rich by taking land as collateral and the institutional support behind it. We 
The first property we developed was Jinbi Century Garden. We didn't have the money to buy the land. We borrowed 5 million RMB from the bank and paid a deposit for the land. In the first phase, we had no money to start construction. It was by the construction company that brought in the capital to meet the pre-sale conditions. For the company's initial development, we opened for sale at a loss at a price of 2800 yuan per square meter. On the day of the opening, within two hours, we sold out. We had sales of more than 80 million yuan and obtained the first barrel of gold. It was very valuable for the company's initial development. Every real estate company in mainland China has a powerful backer, otherwise it wouldn't be able to operate. Even in third and fourth tier cities, real estate companies have the power of the local government or officials as their backers. A large-scale national real estate enterprise such as Evergrande has the powerful support from the highest level of the central authorities. As previously reported, former party leader Zhang Zemin and his partner Zhen Qinghong are known as the Zhang faction. Xu Jiayin is close to Zhen's family. Xu started his career in Guangdong province and his real estate business grew so big because of the full support of the Zhen family. Of course, Mr. Xu is also the white glove of Zhen's family. White gloves generally refers to a middleman or outfit that launders dirty or corrupt money under a seemingly legitimate front. Dirty hands concealed by a pair of white gloves. In addition to the Zheng family, Xu also has the support of various factions of the CCP. It can be said that the entire CCP regime is linked to corruption and crony capitalism. It has, in reality, created an alliance between state power and money. Xu Jiayin's debt, which amounted to US$338.7 billion, wouldn't have reached this astronomical number without institutional support. The authorities have tried to help Evergrande cover up its insolvency. In 2012, Citron Research, founded by Wall Street's Andrew Left, released a 57-page report accusing Evergrande of fraud. It listed the following points. 1. Insolvency. Its capital isn't enough to cover the debts. 2. Evergrande's management had used at least six types of accounting frauds to cover up its insolvency. 3. An improper bribery scheme against local government officials and a complex network of Ponzi-type financing schemes. 4. Evergrande's business model is unsustainable and is showing signs of severe stress. And 5. Evergrande's management has consistently demonstrated serious lapses in judgment. The evidence of Evergrande's management misconduct is simply shocking. It ranges from mail ordering higher education degrees to misappropriating more than 2.5 billion in corporate resources to fund frighteningly non-strategic, privately preferred endeavors. Citron also laid out seven red flags in its report that Evergrande was under severe financial and operational stress. As a result, Citron was penalized and banned from entering the Hong Kong market where Evergrande is listed for five years. And they appealed twice and eventually Evergrande won. Now Citron's allegations, which were not recognized at the time, became a reality in 2021. In addition, in 2016, Moody's and S&P adjusted Evergrande's credit rating to B- and discouraged the purchase of its bonds and stocks or the continuation of lending to it. But this was rebuted by the major Chinese official media in a unified voice. The rating agencies with official background of the CCP also unanimously gave Evergrande the highest rating of AAA. And it's the first and only enterprise in China to get such a high rating. Therefore, Evergrande, a monster that has devoured 1.6 million home buyers and nearly $350 billion of partner funds, represents a capital freak and an economic cancer that emerged during the development of the crony market economy during the eras of CCP leaders Deng Xiaoping and Zhang Zemin. Why has Xu Jiayin been arrested now? According to some analysts, Xi Jinping's action against Xu Jiayin is firstly related to the internal struggle between the CCP's top echelon. Xi personally ordered financial institutions not to lend money to Evergrande, targeting the faction behind Evergrande. Secondly, almost all of China's private real estate companies are highly indebted and leveraged. Many bosses are waiting for the authorities to save them with the mentality of too big to fail. 
If the CCP saves one, the others will follow suit and continue to increase their leverage so the government simply can't bail them out. In August 2023, Xu Jiayin filed for bankruptcy protection in New York, and then Sunak, a major Chinese real estate company, started to follow suit. Many other real estate companies have since copied Evergrande's path of transferring assets. The red economic system represented by Evergrande is irrational and unsustainable. When it comes to its end, there is no force that's capable of stopping the various massive meltdowns.